Hello, fifth graders, and welcome to a read aloud of today's science ebook titled How Ecosystems Work. As needed for today's science lesson, Unit 3, Lesson 12 Healthy Ecosystems. So, what we're told here is what relationships form in a healthy ecosystem? Let's read to find out, pages 4 through 21 in the ebook today. So, in today's book, we'll be seeing about the different types of ecosystems that exist in the world, how plants and animals exist with one another within those ecosystems and how we can help maintain a healthy balance in those ecosystems. So let's take a look today by going straight to page four which will start us off on this page here titled Balanced System. A tree, a forest, a pond, an ocean, we call each an ecosystem. We can describe the connection between the plants, animals, and non-living things in ecosystems. So we can call a single tree and all that lives in its branches an ecosystem. So the tree itself, uh, the owl, and any other uh, bugs or bacteria or animals that may live in that tree. That whole system could be called an ecosystem. A plant takes up water from the soil. An animal eats the plant. Another animal finds shelter underground or in a hollow tree. Because of these connections, the living things survive and the ecosystem stays healthy. Together, they keep the system in balance. So pond life begins with energy from the sun. Green plants grow and animals like turtles eat them. So large ecosystems like oceans, deserts, and grasslands contain many kinds of plants and animals and a range of habitats or places where these living things can live. In some grasslands, for example, like the Colorado grasslands there, the spring no snow melt causes temporary ponds. Migrating geese, ducks, and other birds may use these for nesting or as rest stops as they fly to their more northern summer homes. Other grassland animals only live near a certain kind of plant. The milkweed longhorn beetle lives on or near milkweed plants. So there's the milkweed longhorn beetle, likes to eat the milkweed plants, makes sense he'd like to live near them. So what's the difference? Environment and habitat are words that talk about a place. An ecosystem describes all that happens in a place. So an ecosystem is not just the place, it is everything that lives there and happens there too. For example, a desert environment receives less than 10 inches or 25 centimeters of rain or moisture each year. In parts of the desert of Western Australia, mulga trees grow. Honeypot ants live in habitats containing mulga trees. What's happening in this habitat? Honeypot ants collect nectar from the mulga tree flowers and deliver it to special honeypot ants that act as living cupboards. They store the nectar in their abdomens, or in their bodies. The rest of the ant colony feeds on these special ants when food is scarce. The native people of this area eat the honeypot ants too. So there's the honeypot ants whose abdomens are full of uh, honey from those mulga trees. So the, the plant and the ants living together uh, in that area is what helps us make it call it an ecosystem. Living connections. Not every kind of animal can live in every ecosystem. Animals have adaptations or things that help them survive in a certain place that help them get what they need in order to survive in their ecosystem. Polar bears live in the Arctic and have fat and fur to protect them in temperatures that may dip to uh, negative 70 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 57 degrees Celsius. They depend on breaks in the sea ice to hunt. They patrol the ocean's icy surface, searching for their breathing holes of ringed seals, their favorite prey. Polar bears would not survive well in warm or iceless habitats. So if you were to drop a polar bear into, say, the desert, it probably would not survive there very well. Its adaptations help it survive in the Arctic, not anywhere else. So polar bears will wait patiently for a seal to pop its head up for air. When it does, the polar bear will grab it with its jaws and pull it up. Uh, in order to eat it. A food web, something we've seen before, right? Food web describes who eats what in an ecosystem. It also shows how the sun's energy moves through the ecosystem as animals eat one another. In a tropical rainforest, hundreds of kinds of er shrubs and trees produce tasty leaves, seeds, and fruit. Fruit bats, sloths, insects, and other plant eaters feed on them and in turn are eaten by carnivores, meat eaters like the jaguar. Harpy eagles, for example, regularly dine on sloths. So because animals use part of the energy they eat for living and store only a portion in their bodies, energy is lost as it moves up the food web. Food webs can support just a few top predators. 
Energy from the sun enters the ecosystem and helps plants grow. Animals eat the plants and get energy from them. Other animals eat the plant eaters and the energy is passed along. As living things die and decay, nutrients return to the soil. And the cycle starts anew. So at the bottom of the food chain, we got the producers, the leaves, fruits, uh, fruits and nuts, which are eaten by herbivores, such as chameleons, insects, and frogs, which are eaten by carnivores, like uh, toucan, well, actually toucans would be, on the, would be herbivores, but uh, the top predators up there, like the harpy eagle, the jaguar, and the boa constrictor, those would be carnivores, or top predators, that eat the herbivores. But when any one of them dies, uh, they go back into the soil after they decompose and are helped decomposed by the fungi. Sometimes a very close connection between two living things exists and may help both things survive. Termites eat wood, which is a food high in cellulose. Most animals cannot digest cellulose. Luckily, termites have certain microorganisms, almost like bacteria, living in their guts that can break down this tough material. Both the termites and the microorganisms can then use this food as fuel for living. So another example of two animals that depend on one another would be the cleaner shrimp, this guy, picking food bits from their fishy customers' mouths without getting eaten. The shrimp gets a meal and the fish gets clean teeth. What about change? Ecosystem changes can help keep it healthy. When a tree falls, it makes room for new, healthy trees to sprout. Other changes are in normal parts of life in that ecosystem, like the changing seasons. So for better hiding, snowshoe hares, these guys, sport brown coats in the summer, but then change in the winter to white. That way, no matter what color it is, it can blend in with its environment to hide from predators. A break in the forest canopy allows sunlight to reach the forest floor and new sprouting plants, like that guy there. People sometimes cause harmful changes. Animals' adaptations may no longer fit their environment. Animals may sicken or die. In California, red-legged frogs face threats from habitat loss, water pollution, overgrazing by cattle, mining, and other changes. The area where they can live successfully has decreased by 70%. So those are the red-legged frogs there, a threatened species of frog here in California. So forestry practices like clear cutting where every tree is removed can affect forest habitat recovery. Erosion is a common problem on beaches. People trample the native plants that hold the sand in place and build piers that change sea currents and wave patterns. So that can disrupt the ecosystem living on the shore of our beaches. And trash, oil, and chemicals can wash from land into waterways. Take action. Gather a group and clean up a natural area. Wear gloves to protect your hands and let adults pick up sharp objects for you. We must use great care to support the ecosystems around us. Changes to water, air, and land quality can reduce the ability of animals and plants to live successfully. A broken ecosystem has fewer kinds of plants and animals. It can take years to fix problems. How we live affects the balance of life in our environments. As citizens of Earth, we have a responsibility to care for our one and only planet. So one way you can help is by giving a bird a home by hanging a birdhouse. And with that, thank you for joining us for our reading today of how ecosystems work and how we can help our ecosystems of our wor world healthy and in balance. But thank you so much for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you next time.